Smash Drunk. Last week I took a look at Kirby's Dream Land 1, 2, and 3, and earlier this week I did a video on Kirby Superstar. So let's close out the Kirby games with Kirby's Adventure for NES, an outstanding platformer that's a huge 6 megabits, making it one of the largest games on the system, and it shows this is one of the most spectacular looking 8-bit games ever made. Right off the bat it's obvious that one of the game's biggest strengths is its visual presentation and art style, as well as the implementation of some clever technical know-how to create some really cool background effects. Now, if you're used to the Kirby Game Boy games like I am, one thing you'll immediately notice about Kirby's Adventure is that there's way more screen real estate here, way more room to work with, even compared to Kirby's Dream Land 3. This is both good and bad. It's good obviously because it's just really cool to see that much more stuff in your field of view, but more space means it's that much easier to fly over everything, which you can do no problem in a few levels of this game. It's not game breaking or anything like that, but it does render the layout in some levels to be totally pointless. Kirby's Adventure is pretty dang huge, with seven worlds consisting of several levels, with tons of bonus games here and there. All the classic Kirby game mechanics are here of course, but this is the first game to implement absorbing enemy abilities, allowing Kirby to breathe fire or freeze enemies, to take a couple examples. This aspect is my favorite part of any Kirby game, and it's done really well here, because there's such a large variety of powers you can obtain. That was the hook for me to keep playing, I wanted to find out what else I could do. When I played Kirby's Adventure, I was surprised how much more I liked it than Kirby's Dream Land 3 for Super Nintendo. Nintendo. Sure, that game has the polished 16-bit graphics and an alluring art style reminiscent of Yoshi's Island, but I really like the faster pace of Kirby's Adventure. It's a lot more like the Game Boy games in that way. So yeah, if you're looking for the best Kirby platformer experience, but you're not fond of playing the original Game Boy games for whatever reason, and hey, some people aren't. I guess the lack of color is a deal breaker? I don't know. Anyway, I'd take Kirby's Adventure well over Kirby's Dream Land 3 any day. It's available for cheap on both the Wii and Wii U Virtual Console. Go check it out.